Shalom, everybody. My name is Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel, and we thank you all very much for being a part of our little itty bitty tiny family out here in the middle of a jungle with all sorts of disturbances that you can hear on our roof. You'll hear the disturbances with our nine pibbles, and we do the very best that we can do to try to keep these disturbances down, but 
that's almost impossible. So we thank you guys for putting up with them and with us, and we hope that you guys are having a wonderful week. We hope that you guys had a very astute week in terms of everything. And when I say astute week, I hope that all of you guys are embraced and enhanced, that you guys have put yourself into the word of our creator. We believe as a family that the first five books of scriptures, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy are exactly what they are told that they are. They are the way forward for us. They are a little word called the Torah. And that's actually been um, changed and they, they call it the law, but it's, it's never actually the law. It's always been the way forward. And it's only a, a law if you guys want to keep it a law. Like most of the world doesn't care what the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator say. We are those other people. We believe that it matters 100% what they say in there. And when it says that we need to obey these laws, statutes, and, and commandments for all generations, we believe that we're talking right now. So if you guys are part of these all generations that are keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments, we're happy to call you guys our family. We're happy to call you guys our neighbors. Scripture talks about loving our neighbor as ourselves. It also talks about who is our neighbor. And it says who our neighbor is are those who are in covenant with our creator, those who are like-minded, those who are equally yoked as you, those who enhance their lives by obeying and staying in obedience to the most incredible things that you guys will ever find anywhere, which is the Torah. Cade, we please open us up in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for bringing us all together once again. We ask that your Shabbat is blessed, that everything we do is blessed by you. I ask that we are able to understand what you have set out before us, what you have put for your will for us to read today, and we ask that your blessing, your rock is upon us and everything. Thank you for this family. Thank you for their understanding and their willing to understand your Torah, your will, your Shabbat, and we thank you for all in your name. Right. I hope you guys could hear that because that was really, really super quiet. So hopefully um, you guys caught that. Um, if not, that was Caden opening us up. All right, Jade, will you please um, put the pipes a little bit more than that, please? Hear, O Yisrael, Yahuwah Elohim, Yahuwah is one. You shall love Yahuwah your Elohim with all your heart, with all your being, and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be in your heart. And you shall impress them upon your children, and shall speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you rise up, and when you lie down. And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and shall be found between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Okay, so we're, we have instructions right here, without ever going too much further into this whole thing, that we have a, that we're supposed to be talking about something when we lie down. We're supposed to be talking about something when we rise up. We're supposed to bind something as a sign on our hand. There's so, supposed to be something that are frontlets between our eyes. And we're supposed to, there's something that we're supposed to impress upon our children. And there's something we're supposed to speak of them when we sit in our house. Now, that something, and let me give you one more. It says there's one more thing. When we walk, by the way, there's something that we should be contemplating. There's something that we should be doing. Now, for those who do not understand what this something is, this something is the first five books of scriptures. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Now we have this commandment that we are supposed to do all of these things with our house and with our family. What you're seeing in Deuteronomy 6 is you're seeing a recipe for a solid family created under the hand of our creator, under the words of our creator. If you as a family leader will take this particular verse and you will make this the guidepost for your guys' life, then every single day when you rise up, you will be writing the words of our creator upon the hearts, minds, and souls of your children. You will be talking to them before they go to bed. You will be doing everything to reiterate that everything in our life from the moment that we wake up to the moment that we go to bed needs to be walking this Torah with our creator. It's something that is not just a on the Shabbat thing. It's not something that we just go over. It's something that has the commandment about daily working with it, right? Every single day we're lying down to it, we're getting up to it, we're walking with it. This is so important in the eyes of our creator and in the eyes of the kingdom to come of everybody that's watching our actions and what we're doing, that this is going to determine 
our future. This is going to be determined this time after we walk these lands. We have a choice. Every single one of us have a choice right now whether or not we will obey the commandments that our creator has given to us or if we will walk in the, in the ways of Paul, Rabbi Shaul, where we will go and we will say because five books of the Bible say that you don't need to keep the law when you have 58 other books that say you absolutely need to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. You can take that test of Rabbi Shaul and you can fail that test of Rabbi Shaul by taking the words and the, the laws of our creator and tossing them in the trash because some individual who is not the creator of the universe has said things that you don't understand. And if you take these things that you do not understand, it will be at the detriment of your soul. And we only have one time in our entire world that we have the opportunity to seek our creator. We have 120 years. Our creator has given that to us so that we can seek right from wrong. We can, we can choose Hasatan or we can choose the creator of the universe and his son. And so it is with this that this channel exists so that we can try to show people that there is something other than 41,000 different religions of uh, mockery that go against the words of our creator. There is not a single religion that is in covenant with our creator. There is not one single religion that walks like our creator has told us to walk in scriptures. So when you hook your star to these different religions and you, you, you take the laws of our creator and you say they mean nothing to you, when it's, when it's judgment day, when you're standing naked before our creator, you will be sitting there and you will be living your life. You will be reliving it to a point where you're not going to be able to do anything about it. And if you are lawless, then the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach is going to tell you to depart from him because you work lawlessness. Now, the Christians have a zillion different reasons. They're like, oh, that, that's not talking to us. It's absolutely talking to all of us. If you are lawless and the only way that you know what the law is, is by reading it, you will be shipped off to the outer darkness where there's gnashing of teeth and there's worms that never, ever die and a fire that, that heats you up forever. So it's very, very important that you guys understand what the Torah is. And now we're going to start going through the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator as we get this ready to roll. Now, if anyone has any questions, if any of these don't make any sense to you, if for some reason you think that you should, some of these laws should be killed off, like they should be fulfilled, let's talk about this. This is why we are here in the chat room. This is why we are here with you guys is to chat with you all of you, everybody, and let's bring scriptures to every piece of this. Because if we discuss our futures, our souls, and we're not lining up with scriptures, then that's exactly what the devil wants us to do. He wants us to be confused and he wants you to be confused all the way to your deathbed to where there is no hope for you. Let's continue on. Who do we have out there, Mystical? We have Days Rainey, Candy and Ruby. We have Andy and Elizabeth, Jeremy and Callan, Scott, uh, the Grand, and we have Jody, and I'm assuming Irma is with him. We have Lisa and Bear. We have Sylvia, Sister Barb's back this week. We have Chris. We have Katrina and Quentin and Claudia. I'm scrolling. Hold on. Um, let's see. Sarah Baker's here, and Honeymoon Stitch Brian. We have a new name, Catman, and I think she said her name was Pauline. So welcome to the table. Sylvia and oh, Spider-Man, which is Chai Lighter. And I think I got everybody. If I missed you, I apologize. All right. So here we are, everybody. Um, good to see you all. Much love to all of you guys out there. Mama C.A. Mama C.A. What's up, sis? Much love to you. All right. So here we are, guys. These are these, these commands that we're told to uh, write on our heart, mind, and soul. So if you guys, as we go through these, if you actually have them memorized as you go through it, um, then that's what we do, right? We're trying to go through these and reiterate these to all of our, our people out there because these laws are amazing. So let us begin and go through them. Law number one, commandment number one, or part of the kingdom, kingdom road people, is our job is to be fruitful. Number two, multiply. Replenish the earth. So do it. Have you made of the fish, fowl, and every living creature. You are bearing every tree is for food. 
man and woman should build their own families. Master said, Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Do not eat the blood. Locked before me and be perfect. Great who is covenants, laws, statutes, and commandments. Every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Keep the Passover. Hold on, I got, I got, uh, where are we at? Uh, what, was, what was, Bri- what was, hold on, read, we read that? He says, why do people not keep the law and why would Messiah destroy the law when we know it's so wonderful and such a blessing when we live, when we live it, agree? Yeah, so I don't think people destroyed it. I think the devil destroyed it. I think that religion in of itself destroyed it. The Catholicism, um, if you look at, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's basically, I mean, if you look at one of the, the most outrageous um, religions of all times, is Catholicism, right? If, if there's a hand of evil that has truly plagued the world for, for centuries, decades, I mean, it's just it, the, the, the Catholic Church has been one of those things. And not only are they involved in hiding the truth of our creator, his name, his son, um, they have in, in, enacted thousands of other commandments just like Judaism that are outside of scriptures. And one of the Torah commands we have coming up is, is not to ta- add or take away from the word. So when you go down the road of Rabbi Shaul and you go, the law means nothing to me anymore. The law has been fulfilled. I don't need to do it. Um, then you are taking, you're adding to or taking away from the word because we have never heard anywhere in any scriptures that the law of our creator has any expiration date. There's no time limit. There's no anything. And the greatest trick the devil has ever done is hide the laws of our creator from, from his people. And as we are in these last days, you can completely see that there's not a lot of law keepers. Even when you find people that are law keepers, they are um, they 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 mix and match things, right? They're they're still walking to the way of the Gentiles. Say, for instance, on Shabbat, right? We still have people that buy and sell on Shabbat. When one of the major things that we are told is that we are not to buy and we are not to sell. Why is that? Well, we're we're doing commerce. We're doing things when people should be resting. You wouldn't be outside of your house. You wouldn't be outside of your domain. You would be keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments by basically meeting up as we are right here and you are um, keeping these but for some reason people add to and they take away and they don't care and at the end of the day religion in of itself has told us that the laws don't matter but that the laws of man do matter and so here we are 40,000 different religions later and most people hate the laws of our creator but it's definitely a the hand of Hasatan that has done this to us and has um has tricked us all, which is exactly what scripture says. Okay, continuing on. Keep the Feast of Eleven Bread, Festival of Matha. There's one Torah for the stranger and one for the Hebrew. Signify all firstborn Yahuwah. There are no mighty ones before Yahuwah. But you shall not make graven images. You do not bring Yahuwah's name to knock. To keep the Shabbat, Sabbath. Honor your parents. Do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not cover anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from a rock that tool is touched. You know, I'll go up the altar by the steps. If a man steals cow, he shall restore it five, shall restore it five times. The who is law for criminals. Do not lie with beef. No sacrifice to other Elohim. Do not oppress a stranger, fatherless, or widow. Do not charge your brother interest. If you borrow an entertainment, return him for sunset. Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. No false report. Do not follow a multitude of evil. Do not judge righteously against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Do not oppress a stranger. Love the stranger. Give your land rest in the seventh year. Do not mention any pagan names. Keep the feast of Yahuwah. Do not kill your goat in your mother in his mother's milk. Obey the manager Yahuwah sends before you. Do not bow down to other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. Make no kind of other Elohim or outsiders of the land. Do not make me just anointing oil on an old person. Do not make me just per- perfume on an old person. Do not eat the fat. Do what you say you are going to do. Return what is your neighbors. Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. Women's time of separation. Yahuwah's hygiene laws. Keep the day of atonement, Yom HaKabrim. Keep, oh, do not uncover the nakedness of your family. Do not take your woman's scissor for wife. Do not lie with the woman in her own cleanness. You should not sacrifice your children to Allah. Do not be a sodomite. Be Kodesh, holy. Do not reap the corner of your field, and you should not glean your vineyard. Let's go back real quick to, to Sabbath keeping, as you guys are figuring this where you're at here. Um, you know, one of the thing about Sabbath keeping is that it is, act, you know, when people start keeping the Sabbath, that is where I believe that law keeping begins. And it's not going to be something that is, 
You don't, you don't jump into something that we have been told not to do immediately. It is a slow progression. And, you know, the, the, we have the, the 10 moral laws, right? Everyone calls it the moral laws. The Christian's like, oh, those are the only 10 that we keep. Um, but then you have the fourth commandment, which is keep the Sabbath day. And they will not keep the Sabbath day. And uh, what's funny is uh, we do service calls on Sunday for computers and things of this nature because we keep the Sabbath, right? We don't care what a Sunday is. Sunday is the first day of work for us. So we have all these Christians. In fact, we have a Christian tomorrow um, that we're going to go over to her house. I'm like, hey, I need to pop over there. She's like, yeah, we're watching online service from 12 to 3 and from 4 to 5. I'm like, okay, I'll just sneak on in. We'll uh, jump up on your roof. It's not a big deal. And there, uh, we had another Christian, and we're like, hey, can we, uh, we need to do the same thing. She's like, nope, that's my day to God. And I'm like, okay, well, it may be your day to God, to Yahuwah, but it is absolutely not his day to himself and to the makeup of the universe. And so all of us get these things in our hearts, minds, and souls that we can do what we want to do. We become our own Elohim. Right? When you have made the conscious decision that you can make any day that you want God's day, then you by your own hand are breaking the fourth commandment of the Ten Commandments. Therefore, you're getting a 90% right out of the gate. That's not really good because if we go down the rest of the Ten Moral Laws, we're probably going to end up with a 70% by the time we're done or even less. Um, we're getting down to a non-passing grade, um, any much more than this. And in the eyes of the creator of the universe, um, it's very, very important that we, we must align our hearts, minds, and souls with the heart, mind, and soul of our creator. And it begins on a Sabbath day. It begins. And if people are willing to listen and go, oh, it does say a seventh day. And if they're able to get out of the programming, the satanic programming that they have, that they're worshiping on a fun day, the day of soul victus, right? It's, it's all a pagan day. Then that's where the rest of commandment keeping begins, right? Because you can start seeing that the blessings that you get from a Sabbath day, and it's not just a it's not just a day you have off. Your body, your heart, your mind, your soul, everything you have becomes strengthened. You become emboldened. You have a 24-hour period where you are strengthened up, you are powered up to so that you can bust into the next week and you can go hardcore. And without a Sabbath, and as a lot of you guys know, I wasn't around for a couple of Sabbaths, and I was having to work. And it was very hardcore. I, it, took, it took a long time to even come back. I don't even know if I'm 100% back yet. But when we miss a Sabbath day, it is a vital crushing blow to the human body and to the human nature. And so simply by you figuring out that the Sabbath day is literally something that we need as humankind and that we were built to have this as humankind, then we can start seeing that the rest of these laws that our creator has said and put before us before us are amazing and actually really, really good. Do we have somebody? So Sister Barb says, we think he will come on that day on the Sabbath because his people will be at home and he will keep a, keep their houses safe. Yeah, maybe it'll be on a, a Feast of Trumpets too, right? Maybe a Sabbath day on a Feast of Trumpets and all y'all's people are going to be out there blowing their little horns, uh, not smelling like the world, looking like the world, tasting like the world, maybe. Definitely. And then to go to another question. Yeah. Days Rainey says, do not oppress the stranger. What exactly does this mean? If they are strangers, does that mean they aren't Torah keepers? Probably. So is oppressing them us trying to make them keep the laws? It's because when Yisrael was in Mitzrayim, they were oppressed, they were beaten, they were enslaved. And it was said, don't treat other people like that. Do not. You need to treat them with love, right? Because you're not going to change people's lives if you beat them down. You're not going to change them to Torah. You're not going to put them on the path of Elohim if you are devastating their lives. Yep, and the majority of the people that we run across on your day-to-day -day basis, probably for all of us, I would say 98, 99% of the people are Gentiles, right? We run across, we live in a pagan world. All our, Everyone around us is pagan. It, it, the only way that my statement wouldn't be true is if you never leave your house, right? Everywhere we go, um, we run into that. And so the easiest way that you are ever going to be able to enter somebody's guard is by... When they let it down, you feed them, you take care of them, you offer them strength when they're weak, right? They're, when this stranger who comes up to you asks for money, that's where we witness to them, that's where we give them money, that's where we feed them, that's where we take care of them. If we don't do such an act, and say for instance, the one person that you guys walk across is looking for money, 
and you deny him and he feels no love, he doesn't see the love of Yah's people, that single person right there could have changed his ways a year from now. That person could have led thousands of people into the kingdom by that one example. And so on judgment day, when we have walked past those people, that one person might have changed thousands of lives and we are responsible for walking beyond them and not doing it. So we need to pick everybody up that we can find. It's a hard task. Everybody's out looking for money. There's tremendous amount of beggars. We, we walk down our street that we have. We have guys that chase us for money and for food and things of this nature. And we, we always give it to them. We always do. We do not turn them around. One time all I had in my wallet was a $20 bill. This guy was looking for something. I felt so ashamed of myself looking for smaller bills that I just gave him the 20 and I, I walked on. And it was one of those things that I was looking at my own heart and my own self and, and, and checking myself at the door. And I'm like, for tw am I too cheap? That all I have, I don't have another dime. I don't have anything. I have one single $20 bill and that's what he got. And then I don't have to like wonder if I've done something evil and, and going forward. So what's the other question? That was it. But yep. Sister Barb says, pressing the stranger has to do with unjust weights and measures, false witnesses, etc." That could be as well. I mean, ab absolutely. I mean, the, the, the weights and measurements is something absolutely huge. Um, most of the time, I mean, that's that's something that does, Sister Barbara's right, that does oppress a stranger. It, it oppresses everybody, right? There's a whole bunch of guidelines and a whole bunch of little things that as Yah's people, we are told to be like, right? And one of those is we're not to rip people off. The world we live in is a $49.95 rip-off con job that never, ever is right. Nobody has weights and measurements that are right. And it's a mess. And if we can be those alternative people that don't rip people off, that you don't have to take advantage of them, because humans are extremely easy to take advantage of. They're very trusting. We as humans are very trusting. And it's something that it's easy to afflict those not in the know to make your life better. And she added, if they reject the Torah, we are to keep our distance, but still use weights and measures when doing business, etc. Yeah, and most people are going to reject the Torah, right? Most people, when you talk to them about the Torah, are going to reject it. I've, I've had maybe one encounter in my entire life where people were right at the edge, and all they had to do was have somebody like me come and talk to them and give them the rest of the story. They were already seeking the Creator. They were already at that final piece, and... Um, it's very rare that what you are able to say makes a lifetime change in somebody right away. It's a it's a small little bits at a time, and a lot of it, people have to see us in action, right? They gotta see the people with Zeet Seats walking around doing the kinds of things that we're supposed to be doing, right? If you are that kind of person that's leading by an example because our example is the Torah, then that's where people will watch from a distance. There's always eyes watching everybody. It doesn't matter where you go. There's always eyes watching, even if you don't think so. And those eyes can be the eyes that need saving. And they're going to look to examples. They're going to look to leadership. They're going to look to the people who are doing it right based on what the Torah says. And those are those are our people. Those are the people we're supposed to fish for. Okay. Anything else? I think that's it. All right. Um, let's continue on. Uh, let's see. Ch -ch -ch -ch. All right, anyone know where we're at? Yeah. Do not deal falsely or defraud your neighbor. Okay. Do no. not be a liar. Pay your workers the day's wage they are due. Do, do not, not harm the disabled. Do not endanger your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not adverse your cattle. Do not mingle your seed. Do not mingle in and wool. Do not lie with a taken woman. Do not eat through the streets for three years. Let's go back real quick. It says do not hate your brother. And uh, love your love your neighbor as yourself. What do you what do you guys suppose that means, everyone? Anyone? Well, that means who's our brother? First of all, who's our brother and who's our neighbor? Let's define who's our brother and who's our neighbor. Everyone. Uh, everyone. Our neighbors could be everyone. Our, uh, according to Yahushua, could it be everyone? According to Yahushua, our brothers are those who are doing and seeking the will of Yahua. Right. Those who, those who are in covenant with our Creator are technically our neighbors, right? And who is our who's our brother? If we've identified who our our brothers are, now if everyone around you is in Torah. That means everybody be our brother and sister, right? Yeah. Now, what does loving our neighbor as ourselves mean exactly? Because that is one of these commands that uh, it's the second of the greatest commandments that our Messiah has told us. And it doesn't matter if you're in a, a big neighborhood or if you're in a house out in the middle of the jungle. What exactly do you think loving your neighbor as yourself means? And if we are judged on loving our neighbor as ourselves, how is this going to look for all of us? I would say loving your neighbor would be showing love as Yahuwah showed love to us. Is forgiving your neighbor, loving him? Yeah. Is yeah. holding a grudge against your neighbor. Is that, Eli, does holding a grudge against your neighbor, does, is that loving your neighbor? 
No. How many times are we supposed to forgive our brothers? Uh, seven. Seven. Yeah, and, and, and beyond, right? And that's a lot of times. And so if we are not loving our neighbor as ourselves, that means we're a commandment breaker, right? That means we, we aren't part of Yah's kingdom. And so these are very important things, especially where Messiah Yahushua said that we need to love our neighbor as ourselves. That is the second of the greatest commandment. So let's continue on. What do you got, Miss Nicole? Um, Sister Barbara said, recall back then all Yahudians lived among other Yahudians, their neighbors. Yep. Okay. Yep, 490 times. That's yeah, that's what we're supposed to to forgive our, our brother. Now, what happens if we've made it to 490 times? You guys, I got a bunch of brothers sitting right here. 70 times seven, we got 490 times. What happens at the end of 490 when you guys do it? Do we just hate our brothers? I don't even know if you made it to 490 times. Like, like that's what, like you have to forgive like a, a lot, right? That's yeah. Like, if you make it to 490, I mean, there's obviously issues, but like. Well, you don't think you guys between the you guys have said sorry 490 times in 20 years? Maybe. They're all looking at each other. We have some issues in this house, everyone. We're just kind of throwing this out on, on Front Street here because I, I don't know if we're the only people in this house that have brotherly love issues or not. Let's continue on. Paul okay. Says, purge the evil. Yeah, purge the evil. Absolutely. So what happens? Guys, 490 went first time. Do we, do we start over at 70 times 7 again? I'd say so, yeah. 70 times 7. Is there a limitation? The 490 is 491 where we can hate our brother? Yeah. Anyone? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I think it just starts over. Okay, let's continue on. Where you at? Oops. Uh, I think we're on July the Fruit of the Trees for three years. Do not bring your sorcery. Do not round be your beard or the corner of your head. Do not cut yourself for the dead. Do, do not, not get tattoos. Do not prostitute your daughter. Do not defile your temple. Do not insult the medium. Do not respect your elders. Have correct weights and measures. Do not walk in the manners of the nation. Keep the feast for its fruits, Shavuot, the Omer Count, Pentecost. Keep the feast of trumpets, Yom Karah. Keep the feast of Sukkot, Shem Niatzeret. If you bless the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. If you're killing every animal, you must give him another. Repay injury for injury. Or let you obey the Jubilee year. Finish in Yahoo and repay you if trespassed against. The law of being an Azir. Or is easy on the four corners of your garments. The Torah of whoever touches the corpse. Follow Yahoo's law of inheritance. The Torah of keeping your oath to Yahuwah. Do not add or take away from the word. Guard your soul. Learn what does that mean, guys? What's guard your soul mean? Anyone? But it would be protecting it from this world. It would be staying on Yahuwah's path. All right, let's talk about some ways that we don't guard our soul. Uh, eating unclean food, um, worshiping on the, the uh, Sunday, living in sin. Living in sin. Um, now, what would be? What does guarding our soul look like? Uh, Anyone, okay. Jake? In the Torah, keeping in prayer, keeping away from the world. Not looking like the world, not smelling like the world, not tasting like the world, not watching Holly weird movies, not watching television programming, not not subjecting our hearts, minds, and souls to the evil of this world. Guys, it only takes 30 minutes of watching TV. It takes five seconds of watching TV. It takes 30 seconds of watching a pornography uh, movie, and you are corrupted. Your mind is corrupted. Your heart is corrupted. You're, you have committed adultery. If you're married, you have committed adultery even if you're not married. Um, there is a tremendous amount of ways that we need to protect our soul. And all of these, I, you know, I, I, I fear for my soul watching YouTube ads, right? The other day I was, I was just sitting on here and it's a girl shaking her behind for the first five seconds and they pause and they go real slow motion on it till they take it out. And it's not stuff that I would buy anything from. In fact, it makes me very, very sick that the entire world has gone to that. It makes me sick that my kids have to look at something like this and, and know that these kind of ads are going to come through on their YouTube as well. It is a sick, sick world that we are in. We need to guard our souls in every way. And the eyes will capture everything that we are able to see, which is why we need to stay away from evil. We need to stay away from just this horrible, vile television. And if you guys are subjecting your kids to anything, on television, anything in cartoons, you're ruining them for future. You will not be able to undo the evil that you are doing by letting them be babysat by the television programming. Okay. Uh, the word teaches to be lawless. I also witnessed in films. Yeah, the world. Yeah, he's that, not the word. Yeah, so the world teaches to be lawless. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a, it's a lawless world. Uh, TV, deliberately program and moral behavior. Absolutely. And not only that, when you look at the technology behind a TV, it will put you into a subconscious trance. That's why you sit there. If you walk into a tele, into a living room with all of these people on the couch, their mouths are wide open. They are looking like zombies. They have no idea 
anything that's going on in and around them, but their minds are open to the evil programming of these vile satanic creatures of the devil out of Hollywood. That's who these people are in anything. It doesn't matter if it's Little House in the Prairie. Little House in the Prairie is satanic as well. They're a bunch of lawless people, and it may seem innocent. It may seem like Charles Ingalls is some dude from back in the day that loves God, but they all worship on the wrong day. They are all lawless as well. And so we need to protect our hearts, minds, and souls and keep ourselves away from any of that trash. Okay, learn to fear Yahuwah. You shall love Yahuwah with all your heart. Find the laws between your hand and the front between your eyes. Write the laws on your doorpost. Do not tempt Yahuwah. Do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Let's go back to do not tempt Yahuwah, right? Because a lot of us, we will live in sin. We will live in this evil, evil world. And we are tempted by the evil of this world. And when we succumb ourselves, when we subject ourselves to the hand of the creator of the universe, because we are going alternative to what he wants us to do, then we are tempting our creator. And the human body, if you guys have not read scriptures, there's many times in scriptures where these evil kings or these evil people or something happens that the creator of the universe will give them leprosy. He will have their insides eaten out from, the, from them. Their bodies will turn into a decay of stink and wrath. There's a lot of reasons why not to tempt the creator of the universe. Number one is he is the creator of the universe, right? And he has told us a way to go forward. He has told us a path to go forward. He says in Deuteronomy, I think it's Deuteronomy 28, he says half the chapter, I will bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you if you keep my law, statutes, and commandments. And then the entire half of that, of that, of that chapter is I will curse you, curse you, curse you, curse you if you do not keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of the creator. So when we are out there wondering if we are in sin or not, we have the Torah. That will tell us if we are in sin or not. If we know the Torah and we are walking contrary to the Torah, we are tempting our creator to put us into a very, very bad place. Now, does this mean we're not going to get super sick and horrible, horrible, horrible things are going to get us? No, we live in this world. Hasatan is creeping around like a lion trying to consume us at all times. But there's other things that are far worse that the creator of the universe could absolutely do to a human to make it just not worth messing with him. Okay, do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. Remember Yahuwah. Circumcise your heart. Be to Yahuwah. Swear by his name. Destroy graven images. Do not make an idol of, of Yahuwah as the pagans do their Elohim. Rejoice, Rejoice in all Yahuwah has blessed you with. Do not do what is right in your own eyes. And that goes to these Sunday keepers, right? These Sunday keepers, oh, I'm keeping uh, God's day on the day that I want to do, right? That's completely doing it right in your own eyes. Do not hearken the words of the false prophets. Do yeah. not make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. You shall not eat any baldness thing. You shall give to, to a stranger thing for the dead of itself, but you shall not eat of it. Give tithe of your increase of seed year by year. A law of the end of the seven-year release. Do not borrow from the nation. Do not harden your heart nor shut your hand from the poor. Third month one, get his calendar. Three times a year, all males shall appear before Yahuwah. You shall make judge and officers from all your gates. Do not plant Asherah poles near the altar. There must be two or three witnesses. Hearken unto the prophet Yahuwah has chosen. Prophet has to do to Do not remove your neighbor's property line. How do you deal with false witness among Torah keepers? The first child is get double portions. If your brother's cattle or clothes are lost and you find them, you must return them. A woman shall not pertain to a man, nor a man will pertain to a woman. If you find a bird's nest with the mother and the baby, or eggs, take the babies and not the mother. If you build a new house with a flat roof that they will be lived on, you must put a railing around it. Do not be a prostitute. Do not use dirty money. Law of yours. Do not take a person's millstone for a pledge. If you lend it to your brother, do not enter his house to get your parent. He must bring it to you, return his clothing before sunset, that was a pledge. Do not press a hired servant that is poor and needy. Every, male, every man should be put to death for his own sin. Do not go back. For the forgotten sheep and field deer, for the father, stranger, fatherless, and widow. Do not muzzle your ox be tread that grain. If your brother dies and has no child, you shall take his wife and name the firstborn after your brother. Yeah, I see you guys in the chat talking about this. I won't get too far into this stuff, you conspiracy theorists out there. Um, but you're actually right. Um, there is a an entire um, weaponry system that the government has put out before. Um, I think they call it like the God Jawbone or something where they're actually able to, to insert stuff into people's heads using frequencies. And um, I did a lot of studying on it back in the day. Um, there's a guy on um, a site we host that does a tremendous amount of research in it. And there is a tremendous amount of warfare on the human population based upon frequencies. And so um, 
a lot of people go crazy actually hearing voices in their head and they don't know why they're hearing voices in their head or any of this stuff. And later they've been able to find out there's all sorts of stuff in frequencies in the air. Um, and it, it, it's, it's one of these things. And we tell people, if you have issues like this, move out of the cities, stay out of the cities, get out of anywhere that there's um, power lines all over the place, copper all over the place and all this grounding like they have all over the place. Um, as high tech as the United States of America lives in terms of power, um, I would much rather have it down here where they have it in third world countries where the power goes in and out and it'll blow your TV off the wall. It'll blow your electronics to smithereens because they don't have all of this crazy stuff. Um, it's a lot better than what it is, but there's weaponry against us absolutely that is um, all part of the stuff. Okay. At what? the end of seven years, you're going to read the Mexico. All right. Is that it? Yeah. I thought we had a lesson. All right. Here we go, guys. So... Here we are. Um, thank you all. Always interesting to hang out with y'all um, as we are. Um, what Obi Lion's talking about here? Tendonitis. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Stay out of the cities, guys. It's uh, that's the place you don't want to be. Reconnecting. I think we're back. Did we get it? Woo! There we are. We're drawing. Hey, I think we're back. Anyone out there in the chat hear us? Um, that was actually me. Okay. Let's not do that again. I shall not touch my tablet because it just flips off this thing. Okay. All right, guys. So here we are. Um, we're doing what we do every Shabbat is read out of the Torah because the Torah is amazing and it's one of those things that um, it will enhance your life beyond anything and if we don't know it, it's on us. And so here we are, we're into the book of Leviticus for those who have been hanging with us for Shabbat for some time, you guys have made it through Genesis, Exodus, now here we are with Leviticus and any one of you boys, will you please uh, give me a breakdown of where we're at um, and the whole way through. Um, Moses got the people out of Egypt. He freed them by Yahuwah's hand. They moved out of there. They went across the Red Sea. They went to wars. Then they went and got some laws. Moses is on the mountain now. He been getting some laws from Yahuwah. He came back down with some laws of people. He gave them blueprint instructions, told them what to do. And they have been building stuff. They built the temple at the end of Exodus. And now we are learning how to do sacrifices so the Levites can do their job and give the people some pardons for their sin. All right. And so the Levites are obviously, for those who don't know, is one tribe of 12. Um, what is the job of a what is the job of a Levite? If you're if you were a Levite, what would your job consist of? Masamenu. It would consist of ministering sacrifice. Masamenu. Ministering sacrifice. Um, direct contact with Yahuwah. Uh, as direct as you're, as they are going to get. Um, but there's a lot more than just animal sacrifice, right? I mean, you're talking an entire group of people that are sent to minister to the people. Um, in, in lots of different ways, right? They're, they're going to be the ones who are very uh, studied up in the Torah. So when people have issues, they're going to come and talk to the pre the Levites and figure out what exactly they, they what they missed. And so the job of the Levites is to be an intercessory to our creator. Um, and it's kind of how the Catholics made up their own garbage where they have that guy, the, uh, you know, the, the, the priest who's probably some pedophile who sits in a little, uh, a little room or a little like uh, closet, and he's sitting there telling you how you could be absolved of your sins, um, and they they think this is actually part of the way. So they have taken off what we had with the Levites, and they just made their own corrupted system, and it's 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 messed up. Okay, so here we are, Leviticus five, and when a being sins, that he has heard the voice of swearing and is a witness, or has seen or has known but does not reveal it, he shall bear his wickedness. All right, so uh, you have Uncle John out there. He hits his finger with a hammer and starts swearing it up. Is this what we're talking about? No, this is like what are we talking witnessing about? and making promises is like your word. This right. Is like It's an oath, right? Like we're, not, we're not talking about cussing. bad words, cussing. Right, we're not talking about this. Okay, two, or when a being touches any unclean matter or the carcass of an unclean beast or the carcass of unclean livestock or the carcass of unclean creeping creatures or has been hidden from him, he is unclean and guilty. Okay, so what are we talking about? What is an unclean livestock? It'd be like pig, shrimp. Yep. Like anything that anything that's unclean of a yeah, anything a that's unclean that is yeah that is that is dead. Um, and there's reasons even beyond this, right? This is why we don't eat pig, right? You you have an unclean animal that's living amongst you. But um, they are so ridden full of worms and parasites and different things that the pigs don't even give a rip about. And then they die. And then you're sitting here touching the stuff that is very, very, that can make you very, very sick, right? The people who are against 
cling food are the people that are like, oh, they're, they're just taking our candy away, right? And I've heard that from Christians before. Oh, the pig is like the candy of the Christians. And they love it. They will not get rid of it. But we're talking about things that will hurt a human being and the things that will not hurt a human being. So when you're fighting against eating pig and swine and shrimp and lobster and all these unclean foods, you're fighting against the creation of the, of the creator of the world and what he understands as things that will hurt you and things that won't hurt you, right? He's not, the cling food aren't going to hurt you. Have as much as you want, whatever you like. Don't be a glutton. But I'm saying if you are, are going for the unclean food, it really matters tremendous amount to our creator because he doesn't want you to get hurt. This isn't the denying you the sweet, salty candy of the pork, pork meat, right? Okay, three. Or when he touches uncleanness of man, any of uncleanness by which he is unclean, and it has been hidden from him, when he shall know it, then he shall be guilty. Um, I don't know if we need to go into that one, but um, yeah, don't don't uh, don't be vile. Four. Or when a being swears, speaking rashly with his lips to do evil or to do good, whatever it is that a man swears rashly with an oath, and it has been hidden from him, when he shall know it, then he shall be guilty of one of these. All right, what are we talking about, guys? It sounds like when somebody gets very angry and they, they say that they're going to do something with a venomous oath, right? Mm -hmm. that, that, that it's, it is what it is, right? You cannot create an oath even if you're angry because you've got to finish off with that oath. You can't do it, right? And that's why what you say has to happen, right? You can't, can't go out there and say you're going to do this stuff angry or not. Um, it, it's just what it is. The oath is very, very important. Um. Four, and it's not yet. Yeah, rosy cheek. Apparently, cats get worms if they eat pork. Um, what else? What is, That's what Obi Vine says. So pigs. they were talking about pigs have eleven types of worms. This is what Ty Lighter said. But trusting him matters the most. And then Rosie Chica says, eating them causes diseases and takes them away from their role of cleaning our world. It's literally eating garbage. Yeah. Shout out to beef bacon. Yeah. Shout out to turkey bacon too. Right. We're not. Uh, we're not going to hell for eating this nasty stuff. And I don't, you know, I don't necessarily think that by eating one thing, you're going to go to hell. However, um, Peter says he never had anything defiled go across his lips. Remember when uh, he had that dream and he had, he didn't understand it. And it's like, slay and eat, Peter. He's like, I've never had un uh, uh, unclean things touch my lips. I don't, I don't understand this. And for anybody who doesn't understand the dream, he was, it was not talking about him eating unclean food. It was talking to him about ministering to the Gentiles who by Judaism laws themselves, they cannot associate with them. And so um, <laughs> that's not, uh, that's not Peter's dream is to go eat unclean food. Okay, five, and it shall be when he is guilty of one of these that he shall confess that in which he has sinned and shall bring guilt offering to Yahuwah for his sin, which he has sinned. A female from the flock, a lamb or a female goat is a sin offering. And the Kohen shall make atonement for him, for his sin. And if he is unable to bring a lamb, then he shall bring to Yahuwah, he who has sinned, two turtle doves or two young pigeons, one for sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. Okay, so what's the difference between a, a big offering and these little things where it's a pigeon or it's a turtle dove? Well, it's if you're poor or not. If you're broke. So Boss Clan would be bringing um, turtle doves, I think, or two young pigeons if we could afford those. Well, that's those. what Yahushua's family brought in. After, like, uh, you know, like after the ceremony of the birth and the mother yep. has to like, go cleanse herself and everything. Well, Mary and Yosef brought uh, two turtle doves. Yeah. Said, so. They were broke. Broke as well. Okay. Um, Paravid, yeah, do not call and cling what God had made cling. Yeah, the Christians love that, man. They, they run with that one, Chris. Um, <laughs> that is, I you know, there's like four or five verses that every single Christian will tell you when it comes to unclean food. And um, they at the end of the day, it's their decision whether or not they care about what the creator of the universe wants and there's some of us who really really care what we what he wants and there's some that care what they want and it, it's uh it's hard it's very hard because you want everybody you want everybody to make the kingdom right you're here for a reason on all of this hold on my dog tubby is being bad growling okay let's continue on um eight and he shall bring them to the kohen who shall bring Sorry, guys. No, it's not ready yet. He knows. Right. Sorry, guys. Hold on. Jay, do we please pet the dogs behind you? Okay. We'll make it through this, guys. Um, Paul even explains what tongues is, and it's confusing on the floor, convulsing on the floor. Yeah, dog barking Torah. Yeah, sorry, guys. Um, 
let's see, where is that? Eight? I think so. All right, and he shall bring them to the Kohanim, who shall bring near that which is for the sin offering, and wring off its head from its neck, but not sever it. And he shall sprinkle some of the blood of the sin offering on the side of the altar, and the rest of the blood shall be drained out at the base of the altar. It is a sin offering. And he shall prepare the second as a burnt offering according to the right ruling. And the Kohanim shall make atonement for him for his sin, which has been sinned, and it shall be forgiven him. Now, you guys uh, around this table, these killers, you guys have killed birds before. They don't seem to have a lot of blood. No. I mean, really. it's not. It's like when you gutted the birds that were around here, they just did not. It's not. Well, I think turtledoves and pigeons are larger than what we've dealt with. Dude, they're like that big. I know, but we've, well, we've dealt with even smaller. So. Yeah, we dealt with small birds, and we've also dealt with bigger ones. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Well, I guess that's interesting. We shall not know. Uh, is it Tanamon? Everyone yeah. help me out? Yeah. Okay, and he shall prepare an offering according to the right ruling, and the Kohen shall make atonement for him for his sin, which he has sinned, and it shall be forgiven him. But if he is unable to bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons, then he whose sin shall bring for his offering one-tenth of an ephah of fine flour as sin offering, he puts no oil in it, nor does he put any frankincense on it, for it is an offering. Yes, and Mary weren't broke, broke. Yeah, so there's there's different levels of, of complete brokenness. And I suppose, like, if you were so broke, you could probably go find some lady and ask her for one-tenth of an ephah of fine flour or something if you were that broke. I, I think I think we could have our sins of peace for back in the day, even being dead broke. So continue on, 12. And he shall bring it to the Kohen, and the Kohen shall take his hand filled with it, as a remembrance portion and burn it on the altar according to the offerings made by fire to Yahuwah. It is a sin offering. And the Kohen shall make atonement for him, for his sin that he has sinned in any of these, and it shall be forgiven him. And it shall be the Kohenans, like a grain offering. Okay, so what what is what's happening here? The the, the priest just get uh, I got food. He got that's, food, right? That's lunch, breakfast, dinner, whatever it is. Okay, and there's that's the thing about having the Levites is we were never ever supposed to be taking 10% of our cash and giving it to some fella that's in a uh, 501c3 uh, church of Satan that was never if you were if you wanted to make an uh, a, an offering you would take your flour you take your cows you would take something and you would present it and you would feed the Levites you would take care of them right this isn't a monetary thing this is a survival thing and this group of people are the people who were set apart that this whole system was supposed to work for Okay, uh, chapter, guys, verse. Four okay. Minutes. okay, and Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, When a being commits a trespass and a sin to make by mistake against the Kodesh matters of Yahuwah, then he shall bring to Yahuwah as his gill offering a ram, a perfect one from the flock, with your valuation in shekels of silver, according to the shekel of the Kodesh place, as a guilt offering. And he shall make good for the sin that he has done, that which is Kodesh, and shall add one-fifth of it to it, one-fifth to it, and give it to the Kohenim. And the Kohen shall make atonement for him with the ram of the guilt offering, and it shall be given him. Okay, I need, where's yours at? All right, where are we at? Uh, the bottom last 18. Okay, um, like 17. And when any being sins and has done what is not to be done, any of the commands of Yahuwah, though he knew it not, yet he shall be guilty and shall bear his wickedness. Then he shall bring to the Kohen and a ram, a perfect one from the flock, with your valuation as a guilt offering. And the Kohenim shall take, make atonement for his mistake. He committed unintentionally, though he did not know it, and it shall be forgiven him. It is a guilt offering. He was truly guilty before Yahuwah. And one thing that, you know, is very, very interesting right here is that we're talking about a priest that has done some sort of wickedness, right? Or um, there's, there's always wicknesses within our priest system. There's, there's wickednesses for the individuals, and there's also wickedness for the priest. Now, when you get into Hebrews 8, and it's, it's talking about that new covenant, and that new covenant that the Christians always talk about, they don't realize it doesn't say house of Gentile, right? It says house of Yisrael and house of Yehuda. There's only two houses that the entire covenant is even made for. And so the only way that you'll ever make it to the house of Yisrael or to the house of Judah is by keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator. Now, when it's talking about the new covenant, it also talks about the perfect priest that we have and that our priest, Yahushua HaMashiach, he does not, he's not like a regular earthly priest, that he doesn't have to atone for his sins like these earthly priests do. And so we have an absolutely perfect priest that we have on our side if we are willing to obey the laws, statutes, and commandments of his father and to, to join this kingdom road that we are in right here. And so it is, it is amazing that 
after all the time that the Levites were around and the Levites were dispersed, that we ended up with a Melchizedek priest, a priest who is of the order of the Melchizedek, who is, um, who is our priest. He's a perfect priest. And he not only is he the priest, but he's also the sacrifice. And it is by that combo right there that we have a chance to break the curse of failing the Torah. That is what the curse of, of failing the Torah for us is a, is a spiritual death. We will all die the physical death, but we don't have to die the spiritual death if we are willing to obey and to come into covenant with our creator. And so with that, let's get into Matthew 5. Gentlemen, Matthew 5 is an amazing chapter. Let's take us where we are at. Anyone want to do a quick recap of previous Matthews? So in Matthew, we had the beginning where we find out Yahushua was going to be born. We find out who he is and his family. We find out that he meets John the Baptist and that he in the, from heaven descends descends the voice of Yahuwah saying, this is my son who I am well pleased. And he goes off in the wilderness to fast and then John the Baptist got captured and taken away. Okay, so these are the times and these are the words of our Messiah. Um, amazing, amazing book. Let us begin. And this is Messiah. But when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountain. And when he was seated, his Talmudian, who are his disciples, came to him. And having opened his mouth, he was teaching them, saying, now, in this version, Baruch means blessed. And so all of you guys, um, if you do not know what Baruch or Baruchas, Barakas are, those are blessings. Okay. Baruch are the poor in spirit because theirs is the reign of the Shimaim. Baruch are those who mourn because they shall be comforted. Baruch are the meek because they shall inherit the earth. Now, Right out of the gate, we, we have a couple of things right here that I guess we should probably discuss because um, this is one of these rapture breakers, right? Um, the, the people that believe in the rapture believe that, um, well, the Christians, if you guys don't know what the rapture is, the, the Christians believe the rapture is a, a group of disobedient children that live as Satan wants them to live, will be miraculously disappeared from this earth and taken to a place of comfort before uh, any kind of tribulation or any kind of um, any kind of issue hits them. And so what we're talking right here, it says, uh, blessed are the meek because they shall inherit the earth, right? And that is what in scriptures, that's what it looks like to me. It looks like that at the end of times, there's a place called New Jerusalem where all of us are called over to, those who are obedient into what I would say is a, probably a second exodus. An exodus probably going to be amazingly even crazier than the very first exodus. And when it's all said and done, it seems to me like we don't get whisked off to heaven. We, we get whisked off to where our Messiah will be reigning, which is the New Jerusalem. And so if you're, if you're looking for that uh, uh, magical bus ride into the air uh, called the rapture, I, I, don't, I don't see it. I, I've never seen that. Okay, continuing on. Baruch are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness because they shall be filled. Baruch are the compassionate because they shall obtain compassion. Baruch are the clinging heart because they shall see Elohim, right? Imagine that, right? If you guys, most people probably will never ever see Elohim, right? I hope that I get to see Elohim. I hope that I get to see it sit within his presence anywhere. I'll, I'll, I'll take the stadium out of the back as long as I can still see him, right? But there's a way that we will see Elohim. And those who see Elohim are not going to be the lawbreakers. They're not going to be the ones who don't care what our creator says, right? It's like when you make your parents angry, it takes a while for them to come back because they're watching to see if you're changed, to see if what you're doing and how you're doing is going to change or if it's going to be something else, right? So um, if you want to see Elohim, the only people who are going to see Elohim, which is our, our, our creator of the universe, Yahuwah, then you have to be doing what he wants us to do and not doing what the devil wants you to do because then you're the sons of the devil. Okay, 10. Baruch are those persecuted for righteousness sake because theirs is the reign of the Shemaim. And that's heaven for those who do not know. Baruch are you when they reproach and persecute you and falsely say every wicked word against you for my sake. Rejoice and be glad because your reward in the Shemaim is great. For, this, for in this way, they persecuted the Nebium, who are the prophets, who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt becomes tasteless, how shall it be seasoned? For it is no longer of any use but to be thrown out and to be trodden down by men. 
You are the light of the world. It is impossible for a city to be hidden on a mountain. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it shines to all those in the house. Guys, this is a calling to all of us, right? This is a calling that all of us that are in Torah, that know scriptures, we are to be the messengers of light to the world. And I'm not saying angels of light. I'm saying the actual messengers, the guys that have the papers that are out there saying uh, news is here, right? Um, you are the people who are supposed to be alighting this world, right? All of us, right? It is part of us. Do we just hang out on a Shabbat and we never ever bring the kingdom to any of the Gentiles around us? That's not what it's supposed to do. When we have the answer, when we have the light, when we have the word of our creator, that makes us want to shine it. That makes us want to yell it. That makes us want to save those who are willing to be saved. And most people will not be able to be saved. But there's always the ones here and ones there that can. 16, let your light shine before men so that they see your good works and praise your father who is in the Shimaim. Now, this is, goes against this goes against a Christian religion, right? The Christian religion is like, oh, your works, you'll, you'll never be saved by works. And that is absolutely true. Your works will not save you. But as James says, show me your, your faith and I will show you my works. It's, it's the same thing. When we have the word, when we understand what the word is, we will be a different creature. We will not be the same person that we are before. We have a destiny and we have a place to be and we have people that we need to bring into the kingdom. And that is what our job is. We're not here just to simply dwell and to do nothing other than that. 17, do not think I came to destroy the Torah or the Nebian, the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to complete. There you go. I feel like Yehoshua like said this, knowing the future of like what people are going to do. With yeah. The words. Well, that that's what you have. You have forty one thousand Christian religions that say the Torah is no more, but you have the words of our Creator, the Creator's Son, who says right here that He did not come to destroy the Torah or the prophets. He came to complete it. Now, does completing it mean we are getting rid of it? No. No. It means that he completed it because he walked the Torah perfectly. He came, he understood what his father had told him for probably thousands of years before creation ever came to be. Our creator's son knew the words of his father. The Torah was created before creation was even here. And he came to walk it to show us that we could simply do the same if so we chose. All right, we have our dogs coming back in. They just went outside, so my apologies if you hear anything weird. 18. For truly I say to you, till the Shimaim and the earth pass away, one yod or one tittle shall by no means pass from the Torah till all be done. Okay, what did this just say? It said that if you look out the window and you can see the heaven and you can see the earth, that means the Torah is in full 100% effect, right? That's what we're talking about right here. If you look out the window and you don't see heaven, you don't see earth, then possibly you might be in some other time. But I would pull, pull out the Bible at that point and make sure that you're really right at that point. But this is what it's saying, guys. The Torah is here for all times. This is the coming out of the mouth of our Messiah. We cannot disrupt this. We cannot say that um, our Messiah came and did away with the Torah because he clearly says he isn't. So if the Torah is gone, then that means our Messiah is a liar, right? That's the thing. And so dealing with uh, dogs again, guys, sorry for the disruption. So the Torah is good for all times, for all generations, for, for every point in our lives. It's not gone. It's, it, the only time it'll ever be gone is when we are not observing it and it's gone in our lives. But it'll always be there if so you seek it. 19, whoever then breaks one of the least of these commands and teaches men so, so, so shall be called the least in the reign of the Shemaim. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the reign of the Shemaim. Now, this is interesting. This is a real interesting verse right here, right? This is one of these, these, these dangerous things. The, the problem with problem with boss clan and even attempting to teach Torah is that we are going to be judged a lot more than regular people. And if we do things that are against the will of our creator and we teach others that same thing, I'm in trouble. We're all in trouble. And so this is why we have to be very, very, very careful that we understand what all scripture says, not just what some of it says, right? And those who are teaching just the words of Rabbi Shaul 
and you're sitting out there telling everybody that the law is no more, imagine your eternity. Imagine for every soul that you by yourself sent to the great hell, that's on you. It's going to make your eternity even worse and it's something that we should not ever do. We've gotta be very, very, very careful. Um, 20, for I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall by no means enter into the reign of the Shamaim. Now, most people don't understand this, right? Most people are like, this is what the Christians will go. Oh yeah, unless our righteousness exceeds that of scribes and Pharisees. Guys, this is what most people don't know. The scribes and Pharisees, a lot of them, not all, not all, not all, but most were lawbreakers, right? They were lawbreakers because they violate Deuteronomy 4.2, which says you cannot add or remove things from the Torah. They add 200 different books. They have all of these other things. But not all of them, not all of them, their hearts were bad. They, they jumped into yet another religion. The Pharisees and the scribes, the Pharisaical people, we're talking just another religion. We're talking just like Christians, we're talking just like Catholics. It is just a religion like all of it. And so when he says right here that your righteousness needs to exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees, that shouldn't be hard because these guys were lawbreakers. And so our job and what we wanna be is not to be lawbreakers is important. 21. You heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that whoever is wroth with his brother without a cause shall be liable in judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be liable to the Sanhedrin. But whoever says you fool shall be liable to the fire of Gehenna. Wow. All right, brothers, what do you guys have here? What do you guys think? It just says right here, um, he's talking about murdering but then he goes into that, whoever is mad at the brother without a cause are going to be liable in judgment. What do we make of this? Well, I mean, it's, it's self-explanatory. If you're angry with your brother without a reason, then you're, you're putting fire on your own head. Yeah, that's crazy. That's scary, isn't it? Very scary. Yeah, we wouldn't want to be those brothers that hate each other. 23, if then you bring your gifts to the altar and there remember that your brother holds whatever against you, Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First make peace with your brother and then come and offer your gift. Uh-oh, what did this just say right here? Jade. He said to leave your gift the altar and go. No, if it, so what, what are you doing at the altar with a gift? Who are you? You're basically you're making an atonement with Yahuwah. You're making an atonement with Yahuwah. And Yahuwah said, and Messiah says that instead of you making an atonement with Yahuwah, what do you need to do? Go make peace with your brother. Go yeah. Make brother. Yeah, and because Yahuwah doesn't want to hear from you until we are um until we're right with our brother right isn't that isn't that a, a crazy thing it's it's you know these are the the words of messiah that when we hold this against the torah all of us are falling very very short okay 25 be well-minded with your opponent promptly why are you on the way with him lest your opponent deliver you to the judge and the judge to the officer and you be thrown into prison now what is messiah saying here he's saying that <laughs> Excuse me. Um, be smart when you're, when you're with enemies because they will they will try everything they can to take you out. Yeah, and I mean this is like really good advice, right? Um, anybody that you know, the, the rich people will hand you over to the judges. Rich people will give you a small claims court. Rich people will take you to school. Um, and Messiah just throws this out there that hey, if you have an opportunity to make it right before you end up in the hands of a judge. Do it. That's what you should be doing. So you get a lot of stuff out of Messiah Yahushua. This is how to save your freedom, right? Stay free. We don't want to. We don't want to get trapped into uh, the jails of the world. Twenty six. Truly, I say to you, you shall by no means get out of there till you have paid the last quarter. So yeah, you get caught up in the man's jail, then you're you're doomed. Twenty seven. Your letter says he argued with the cop and ended up in jail, as it was written. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't. Yeah, that's that's one of those things we don't we we don't do, unfortunately, because uh, we live in a strange world, very strange world. Yeah, yeah. careful, careful, Kyle Ladder, don't end up in jail. Okay, twenty-seven. You heard that it was said to those of old, "You shall not commit adultery," but I say to you that everyone looking at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Uh oh, we're doomed, right? Uh, you walking down the road as men, you see the good looking woman, you, you sit there and you lust with her after your eyes. We just committed adultery according to what Messiah Yahushua says. And a lot of people will go, well, that's, that's not exactly what it said back in the days. That's not what the Torah says. 
Well, this is what the son of the creator of the universe said that's helping us understand the Torah a little bit better. We are to stay committed to our women. We are committed to those who we love, right? And the, the easiest way to show you are absolutely not committed to those around you is to cheat, is to is commit adultery. You make your spouse an adulterer, you're an adulterer, you've broken a heart, you've broken trust, you're never, ever, ever going to get back. So as all of you men out there are perousing around thinking you guys are the uh, yard varmints, that is something that you will absolutely destroy yourself with. And you'll probably end up with an STD. And you probably don't want either of those. But an STD is probably the least of your worries when your soul is a danger. 29. And if your right eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out and throw it away from you. For it is better for you that one of your members perish than for your entire body to be thrown into Gehenna. Okay, what did Messiah just command us right here? Basically, if any body part causes you issues, you should get rid of it. You okay, so that, that would stand for a pornography addiction, right? You're sitting there and your wife goes to work or she goes to sleep and you go and you start committing adultery on your computer and you become a, a, a fornicating adulterer and um, you can't stop it, right? It's better, according to the words of Messiah, that your eyes are gone. And I wouldn't imagine if you decide to pluck one eye out, I think you'd probably end up uh, stopping that pornography addiction. It's like keep yourself away from sin, right? Cut out keep, whatever. Keep you yourself so far away from sin that you're willing to cut your arm or your eye off that you will not do this because it's going into to eternity. We can get these body parts back, but we can't save our souls once we've already done the do. So we got to be very, very careful. 31. And it has been said... Whoever puts away his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that whoever puts away his wife, except for the matter of whoring, makes her commit adultery. And whoever marries a woman who has been put away commits adultery. Okay, a lot of this is a lot causes a lot of confusion to a lot of different people because you have the Torah command is there's there's no law that says you cannot have multiple wives, um, and it, there's also a, a command on how to put a woman away. Now, what is Messiah saying here? Because does this sound different than what scriptures tell us before? Or what is he trying to say? Because uh, Yehoshua explained later, it was their hardness of heart, right? They would get rid of their women. They would like end up not loving them and all that. And Yehoshua said, that is not how it was intended to be. Because once you joined with the woman, it was supposed to be for eternity. You were to be together to like the end of your lives. Yeah. And, you know, we can see through scriptures that um, multiple marriages were never um it never bred like really strong families um it was nothing but division um issues um women who have broken hearts broken expectations having to share their man um it's 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 uh, there's a lot to it right and so one of the things the messiah says is that um if you divorce your woman regardless um you're committing adultery, right? You you are you have a you you getting another wife, she getting another husband. You have committed adultery, regardless of getting a letter of divorcement. It's just what that's just what it is. A man was made for one woman, a woman was made for one man. That's the way it is. And so Messiah clears this up a little bit better for us on a lot of this. Okay, thirty three. Again, you heard that it was said to those of old, "You shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to Yahuwah." But I say to you, do not swear falsely at all. Neither by the Shemaim, because it is Elohim's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great sovereign, nor swear by your head, because you are not able to make one hair white or black. But let your word be yes, be yes, and your no, be no. And what goes beyond these, this, these is from the wicked one. Okay, let's discuss it. Um, right? What, what do we have? Well, we just learned in Leviticus not to swear falsely, and if we do, we should we have to make atonement. But Yehoshua said, "When you say something, let it be true, and when you and when it's not true, so don't don't say it." Now, are we getting outside of the Torah by the words of Messiah? No, this is this why, is because it's by the Torah says saying do not swear falsely, and he's saying if you want to keep yourself out of this sin, don't swear at all. Yeah, and that's it. All Messiah is doing is is reiterating, un, helping us to understand the, same, the Torah better. It's the same way when he said, look at a woman with lust, right? If you committed adultery, you're going to be judged, stoned. That's yeah. what it was supposed to be. And he's saying, if you want to stay out of that, stop looking at women with lust. Yeah. Now, for all of you guys who think we're a bunch of monkeys on our spinning water ball, um, it just clearly says here that the earth is our creator's footstool. 
Um, you don't have anything in scriptures anywhere from the beginning of the book to the end that ever says that we're spinning around at like 666 miles an hour at a 6.6 .6 degree tilt while we're spinning 2,000 miles an hour around the sun going the other way, simply, right? These are all things, when you read scriptures, it's very, very clear that there's foundations of the earth, right? You read the book of Enoch and it tells us about the, the gates and the, the sun and the moon go out of and how the seasons are made and all of this stuff. People asked the other day, they're like, why would it matter that our creator was hidden from us, that he's not sitting right above us? And everybody, it's real easy, right? If the creator's not around, when your parents are not around, they leave for the city and you decide to have a party because your parents aren't around, it's the same thing. The people, the powers that be, think that uh, they have us confused, that our, our, we're billions of light years away from our creator. There's billions of these planets with all these different people out there, and we're just in, in an anomaly out in the middle of nowhere. It really doesn't matter. He may come to us. No, our creator is sitting right outside of us, right? We're in a fishbowl. We're in a dome. He's looking down on us. He's looking at his creation. He's watching to see who chooses him or who doesn't. Right. And it's very important that we do understand that we live in a world of hoaxes and that they have everybody completely uh, li lied to as terms of, of what we are at. And our creator is sitting right above us looking in and he's hoping for us to choose him because he's definitely chose us. He created us. OK, continue on. You heard what it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the wicked. But whoever slaps you on the right cheek, turn the other to him also. OK. What do we make of this, guys? Uh, he, he's teaching us peace. He's teaching us how to stay away from evil. Stay away because if you slap someone back, right, it's only more wickedness. You're only brewing more evil. Yeah, and so an eye for an eye is still this, the the right the right answer, right? I mean, in in Torah, that is what Torah gave us was an eye for an eye. But Messiah gives us something a little bit different onto this, and he says that we need to basically we're showing love, right? We're 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 showing ourselves a a basically a sacrifice or something for the anger that is coming and we're, we're allowing um there there's a lot of there's a lot to be said for this command an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth and so messiah's given us not a different way but he's giving us more clarity on exactly what this means and usually when it's an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth you brought these people before judges right you brought them before witnesses you there it wasn't just a you go and you knock the guy's tooth out or uh, knock his eye out there's there's a system that's set up but what we need to do is, is if we are about love, if we are about trying to bring the kingdom to fruition, then we have to understand that like Messiah got beat, it's going to happen to us as well. And it's, you're never going to turn somebody to the kingdom when they slap you and you slap the snot out of them, right? It's not going to happen like that. The only way that a lot of people are ever going to turn is when they see an example of righteousness where people are giving you unrighteousness. Okay, 40. And he who wants to sue you and take your inner garment, let him have your outer garment as well. And whoever compels you to go one million, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. You heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, Baruch those cursing you, do good to those hating you, and pray for those insulting you and persecuting you. All right, where do we have a Torah command that says hate our neighbor? I don't think, I don't think we've ever got that. I think that was more of uh, Judaism. More yeah, of, yeah. I don't, I don't know where that actually came from, but what, what he said, what Messiah just said is, you have heard it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Now, let's continue on here um, into this. 45? 44. But I your enemies, Baruch those cursing you, do good to those hating you, pray for those insulting you and persecuting you so that you become sons of your father in the Shammai, because he makes his son rise on the wicked and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those loving you, what reward have you? Are the tax collectors not doing the same too? And if you greet your brothers only, what do you do more? Are the tax collectors not doing so too? Therefore, be perfect as your father in the Shammai is perfect. Well, no one likes tax collectors. Yeah, tax collectors, I know we all want to hate the tax collectors. And uh, the IRS, they ain't just tax collectors. Them are tax collectors with weapons. And they will take you and throw you in jail for... They didn't used to be. They didn't used to be as cruel and evil as they are now. But uh, now you got Babylon running, running amok with 70,000 different agents with guns and things trying to take anyone and everyone 
and we can see it too. There's a lot of people, a lot of tax problems right now, and the uh, it's just a mess. It's a mess. They're definitely going after the people of the U.S. All right. Um, well, guys, um, I hope that you guys are uh, er good. I hope you guys had a good uh, reading. We thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. Uh, we love you all, and um, if there's nothing else going on in the chat, uh, Jade is going to uh, bless. He's going to bless us all, Jade. Yehovah Baruch and guard you. Yehovah may his face shine upon you and show favor to you. Yehovah may his face upon you and give you peace. Thus, they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I shall barak them. Okay, we love you guys. Oh, We love you. We love you truly. Thank you for being a part of this. May Yahoo bless you and keep you. May his light forever shine on you. May the Torah forever infiltrate your life, forever infiltrate everything about you and your family. May Messiah's love and Messiah's reign come soon. And we hope that you guys have a wonderful day. Much love to all of you. All right. Shalom. Shalom.